Well, hello everybody. I have a Bible review for you today and it's somewhat of a special Bible review because uh, my understanding is you cannot just buy this Bible anymore. I got kind of lucky. I frequent the used bookstores in my area a lot because that, basically that's what I can afford. Um, and every once in a while you find some gold. So let's get into this Bible. This is a new English Bible with concise reader's guide. I'll show you what that is. And that's actually pretty cool. I think that it's pretty cool. And this is what caught my eye. So this is a Cambridge Bible. <laughs> I see the Cambridge label sitting there on the shelf and I said, I gotta have that Bible. I hope it's not expensive. Um, it was two, like $2. Uh, <laughs> and so I got this Cambridge New English Bible for about $2. Um, so let's get into it. I want to show it to you and review it because I think that it's interesting and uh, and it's just different. It's different than the other Bibles that I've that I have. Um, so let's go over the specs real quick. You're looking at just slightly bigger than five and a little bit longer than seven. It's about the size of a pit minion. It's just a little thicker than a pit minion, and we're looking at about an inch thick. So I actually really like this size. Um, I'm looking for a couple more Bibles this size for my kids, uh, but they're hard to find that are this size because thin lines are so popular and thin lines are great Bibles. Um, but these ridges are not raised. They're kind of stamped in. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see it's a little bit chewed up. It is a used Bible. I believe it's from the mid 70s. And I'll tell you why as we get into the title page. Uh, but it's essentially even though it's a little chewed up and it's from the mid 70s, I believe that it's brand new uh, because there's no writing. I have been able to, I haven't been able to find writing. When I first got it, this was turned in, you know, like you get a, a new Bible and the ribbon is folded in. Um, there was no writing in it. Um, so essentially it's brand new. It just is 40 years old or 50 years old potentially. Um, the color is really unique for those of you that have that uh, frequent my channel, you know I have color trouble. Um, so, uh, so I'm told that it's like a light brown. It looks light brown, kind of a light brown orangey color to me. And I've been told that that's pretty, pretty accurate. Um, it is a little on the stiffer side. So I don't know if I could treat this um, and soften it up a little bit. Uh, but, but let me show you what type of animal it's from. So this is water buffalo calf skin. <laughs> so it says a Cambridge Bible made out of water buffalo calf skin. Um, and I think that it's super unique. So let's take a look at what's inside here. You, get, you do get one ribbon. Um, and it's not a bad ribbon. It's just as old, so I could fix some of that. This definitely isn't going to become my daily driver. Um, I just think it's a unique Bible that costs $2. You can see the liners coming up a little bit. So it was just pasted down. Um, but again, those things are easily fixable if you were going to use this all the time. And the liner actually is really pretty. Almost a camouflage look. And we get into the presentation pages. So none of this is filled out. Um, and you know I'm a big proponent of filling out your presentation pages. If this is your Bible and it's a Bible that you're going to use, uh, fill these things out. Uh, but I got lucky. Uh, none of it was filled out. This has a, a family record section, which in my experience with the Bibles that I have, getting a, an actual family records section in uh, a small Bible like this, like a little personal size Bible, is pretty rare because... I don't have very many small Bibles that have a family record section, and I love these family record sections. So all the typical stuff, and then we get into the title page. So you can see how old it is. You can see the paper is, um, you started to get worn. But it looks like it was just sitting closed on a shelf for decades, because the pages aren't torn or anything. Um, we have the group of folks or churches really that were involved in the translation. New English Bible made by Cambridge. Cambridge, uh, if, if you didn't know, is the oldest Bible producer. They've been producing Bibles for hundreds of years, I think 500 years. 
And then we have the text edition information. So it looks like the last time they printed this text, at least prior to this, is uh, 1972. Interesting enough, this is not for sale outside USA and Canada, and in but it was printed in Great Britain. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot about this Bible that I don't don't fully know or understand because it's not a translation that's uh, that we use or is that's popular in the United States right now. I did do a little bit of reading on it. And again, I'll, I'll put in the description a link to the article, um, an article or two that I found about the translation. But my understanding is that they no longer, um, that it hasn't been updated and the New English Bible didn't really catch on, let's say, uh, such as the ESV or the NASB or, um, or the Net Bible. You know, these are all Bibles that are very widespread. Uh, my understanding in my reading is that this is not that. Um, but that it still is a, a good, accurate translation. Um, it gives you a little bit of a preface, like every good Bible should, talking about a little bit about who was involved in the translation and how they translated it, meaning how they chose some of the words uh, when they had trouble. And then you get to the contents. Regular table of contents. Um, And an introduction. This is an introduction actually to the Old Testament. So there are some notes. This is not a study Bible. So there's not study notes. But there is an introduction to the Old Testament. And uh, let's see my test here that you know, I, you know I love. So they start each new book on a new page. <laughs> that might just be my weird thing. But I love when they start new books on a new page. So it's always hard to tell via video, but um, maybe you can, especially if you have a smaller Bible or have a Pit Minion. This font, I love it. It's very easy, easy to read. Um, my guess is, and I'm not a professional font guesser by any stretch of the imagination, but my guess is that it's probably like a seven, uh, maybe even an eight, but between six and a half and seven and a half would be my guess, and it's very easy to read. Uh, my Pit Minion, which is the Bible that I use probably the most, uh, the font is much smaller than this, in, for me, in my opinion. So this is very easy to read. I, I actually love the layout and how it looks and how easy it is to read. Um, it's hard to tell what it looked like when it was new because the, uh, the pages are, have started to yellow. And it is not line matched. Line matching, is, although there is very, very little ghosting, to be honest with you. Um, let's look at some of the, uh, you can always see ghosting better in the, like in Psalms and Proverbs, wisdom, literature, poetry. So you can see it, uh, but it, it really is pretty difficult if, you, if, you're, if you just have the page sitting down here. Um, there's not a whole lot of ghosting. Now, something that I noticed that maybe that some of you that are more knowledgeable than me can comment on, because we do not do this, is this, although this is only for sale in the United States and Canada, it was, it was made across the pond in the UK. So let me know, because this isn't something I see. This is not a verse-by-verse -verse Bible, like the topaz. The topaz is, you know, you see 10, 11, 12, 13, and that's the verse that's there, and it's just one verse per line, right? This, they have just chosen to put the verse markers outside, in, you know, in the margins. Um, so 13 technically starts somewhere in here, and 16 technically starts somewhere in here. Sometimes, you know, there's even a word that's, cut off that starts again on the second line. Um, so I, I'm just curious if you know more about this or if this if this has just happened to be something they did in this particular Bible or maybe in the mid 70s. Uh, I think it's interesting. I like it. As you may or may not know, <laughs> the original autographs of the texts that are in the Bible um, did not have numbers. <laughs> the numbers, the chapters and the numbers were all added later. All these little paragraph indentations and and stuff like that. That was all added to help us uh, navigate through the Bible a little bit quicker. So it doesn't bother me that there are no verse numbers mixed in with the text. It actually makes it kind of nicer to read. Um, you always have some footnotes. If your Bible doesn't have footnotes in it, uh, there's gotta be a reason for that. 
um, there should always be some some kind of footnotes because there's always a word that they want you to know or something to that effect uh, that they changed or that they interpreted a certain way. All right, so that's really basically it. There's not a whole lot of margin space. Um, these personal size Bibles are not the best for like copious note taking. Get about a half of an inch there. Um, but you could use symbols. I in my pit minion I use symbols, um, which is the reason I use symbols is so I can keep my symbols in a small Bible like this. Let's flip open to the back and show you uh, what's left. So it, tell, it gives you a little preface on this, but it has what they call a concise reader's guide. This is actually pretty cool. There's a couple of Bibles uh, lately that I've seen that have something like this. It's almost like, in my opinion, it's like a mix between a concordance and a dictionary. So you wanna look something up. So maybe you wanna look up Abednego, okay? And it tells you a little bit about Abednego and then it tells you where to find him, okay? So instead of being just a concordance or just a dictionary um, you can look up names uh, I mean it's it's very similar to a concordance but on a small scale it'll give you a little bit of a definition that will give you throughout the Bible where this particular word is um, is used uh, there's also like what I would call thoughts or ideas pride mixed into here um, which might not be an exact term that you're looking at, but you want to, you know, know a little bit more about parables. Okay, like here's a few that you can look up and here's what parable means kind of thing. So maybe that's why they're calling it a reader's guide. Um, and then there's of course lots of, lots of other kind of information mixed into this little reader's guide. So um, let's flip open to the very back. You get just, just one or two blank pages that really is the text, how the text block is sewn into the, um, to the cover. And that's it. So I think this is a, a cool little unique Bible, the New English Bible with Concise Reader's Guide by Cambridge made out of water buffalo calf skin purchased for $2. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this little Bible. Hey, you know what? Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. If you've made it through this whole video, if uh, if you if you get a lot from this from this content that's getting put out, and you've in, in any way feel led to donate to this ministry so I can keep making videos, I have included a link at the bottom of the description uh, to a PayPal account. Thank you guys so much. I uh, hope you have a great day.